In 1674, John Mayo of the University of Oxford published the results of his experiments on air and respiration. Based on his observations, he concluded that the life-sustaining properties of air were due to a single component of the air mixture, and that this was the same component of air which was responsible for combustion. He proposed the revolutionary idea that the lungs extract particles of this spirito ignea aureus from inspired air and transfer them into the bloodstream. He further argued that these particles were then involved in the generation of heat by muscles in a manner related to their role in combustion. A full 100 years after Mayo's death, Joseph Priestley of England and Antoine Lavoisier of France isolated his fiery spirit of air, oxygen. Following Priestley and Lavoisier's isolation and characterization of oxygen, the investigation of the role of oxygen as a therapeutic agent can be divided into two periods, each roughly a century in duration. Initially, intermittent inhalation of relatively low doses of oxygen and other gases was investigated as a therapy for diverse conditions, most famously at the Pneumatic Institution in Bristol, England. No useful effect of oxygen was described in any of the multiple conditions in which it was tested. After the initial failure of pneumatic medicine, the reputation of oxygen as a therapeutic agent amongst the medical profession was further damaged by its association with quackery throughout the 19th century. In the absence of any evidence, intermittent oxygen inhalation was marketed to the public as a panacea for diverse unrelated conditions. At the present time, we believe that the value of inhaled oxygen therapy lies in continuous inhalation of the gas as a supportive measure while the patient recovers from an acute illness. This belief was expressed in reports published as early as 1890 and was supported by the experiences of doctors treating victims of gas attacks in the Great War. As we shall see, there were, however, major impediments to the adoption of effective continuous inhaled oxygen therapy throughout much of the 20th century. In the videos which follow, we look at the key events and the key figures involved over the last 250 years of oxygen use in medicine. This will be both informative and will allow us to enjoy stories of heroism and sheer brilliance.